nationally, soybean cyst nematode is the number one pathogen on soybean, causing more than $1.2 billion annually in yield losses. Soybean cyst nematode is a major yield robber for soybean farmers. This is why soybean checkoff dollars are so important for funding this research. My research program is focused on studying plant parasitic nematodes, in particular soybean cyst nematode, the number one pathogen on soybean. Soybean cyst nematode is a microscopic roundworm that lives in the soil and feeds on the roots of soybean plants. This nematode is a fantastic parasite because it forms very specialized feeding cells within the roots that allow it to derive the nutrition it needs to, in order to survive and reproduce. Wilting, chlorosis, and stuntings are typically the symptoms associated with soybean cyst nematode. You're going to find uh, it will depend on the, the level of the soybean cyst nematode population in your field. And so you might have no symptoms above ground whatsoever, and you can still be suffering from a significant yield loss. If you have a very high population level in your field, then you're going to start to see the above ground symptoms start to show up themselves. To protect yield from SCN, farmers can do three things right now. One, soil sample their fields to determine if they have SCN and do that on a regular basis if they do. Secondly, they can plant resistant soybeans and if at all possible, rotate the type of resistance. Thirdly, they can plant a non-host crop such as corn, wheat, or rice. The only way you're going to know if really the causal agent is soybean cyst nematode is to sample uh, take a soil sample and send it in for analysis. Typically at the end of the growing season after harvest, that's the best time, that's when the population levels will be at their highest. And if they find out that they do have SCN, that I, I would encourage the farmers to then send in samples on a yearly basis to monitor their population level and to be sure that their management practices are effective. However, if they send in a soil sample, they find out they don't have SCN, then they probably don't need to sample again until three years later. So I would encourage farmers to work with their regional agronomists to uh, regularly scout their fields and to submit soil samples for analysis. Our research is trying to understand the genes in the plant that allow it to be resistant to the nematode and the genes in the nematode that allow the nematode to cause disease. So if we can understand what the genes are in the plant and in the nematode that allow the two to either connect and lead to a susceptible interaction or not connect and lead to a resistant interaction, then we can use that information to develop better management practices for soybean cyst nematode in the future. So one of the reasons why this research is so important to soybean farmers is because natural resistance is one of the best approaches to manage SCN. It's economical, it's environmentally friendly, but the major drawback to natural resistance is that the soybean cyst nematode can adapt to it and ultimately overcome or evade that resistance so that it can develop on it, making that resistance less effective. And so our research is really focused on trying to understand how the nematode is adapting to the natural resistance. And once we understand that, we can use that to develop novel strategies to enhance natural resistance.